Third term. I like to call it noise. What's the meaning of a signal and noise? Very simple. For example, let's say, uh, suppose, suppose, let me use an example. Suppose I make a phone call. Suppose I'm sitting in a bar. Of course, a bar very often is very noisy, right? Then I make a phone call to my friends. So at the other end of my friends, of course, you know, he or she gonna gonna uh, he here as will be my voice, my signal, plus the background noise of the of the bar, right? So in that case, what kind of situation will be a good regression? What kind of case will be a bad regression? Hopefully. My signal, you know, my voice will be loud, right? <laughs> the background noise, which is a UI, will be weak, right? So that in that case, my signal dominates <laughs> the background noise so that it will be easier for my friend. You know, my friend overall, he gonna hear is my signal plus background noise, overall stuff, right? So. His, his, you know, his job will be basically run the regression to tease out the background, background noise so that he can figure out what's my beta x, what I'm talking about, right? So actually, that's exactly the idea of a regression, just a tease from overall information, tease out the noise so that we can figure out what's the signal, right? So how can we, how can we call a good regression? What's a bad regression? A good regression, very simple. The signal part, X part, could be strong. <laughs> Noise part, UI part, is weak. How do we measure strong or weak? We calculate, we measure them by using variance. For example, if a variance of X is large, then that's a strong case. If the variance of error term UI is, uh, you know, is small, that's a weak case. So correspondingly, correspondingly in our graph, uh, there's my graph. Correspondingly, in my graph, for my OLS, variation of X is my, you know, horizontal line is my X. So that we, we, we hope X variation is large. In other words, we have someone, you know, suppose this is a wage over education. We, we hope in terms of X, in terms of education, some of them really large education, some really small education, so that the variation of my X to be large, so that you know it will be easier for me to, to figure out. Suppose your education increase of Y one year, then what happens to the to the fifty line, right? To the to my beta, right? The opposite, a bad regression. Suppose my X variation very small, even zero, doesn't vary at all. In other words, everybody has the same education, right? In that case, it must be a bad regression. In other words, how do I supposed to know if your education increased by one year? What happens to your wage, right? That's why in terms of signal X, we hope variation to be, to be large. Horizontal-wise variation is large, right? What's UI? UI in this graph, it will be, still remember, you know, I showed you the those lines. Those are the, those are the uh, those those are the red bars I showed you before, right? In this graph, those are the my UIs, right? <laughs> some are positive, some are negative, so on so forth, right? So UI variation basically on top and bottom, how large is the variation vertical wise, right? So that we hope still remember variance of UI to be small. In other words variation of UI to be small, right? If variation UI is small, basically they are close, close to my fitted line right there. So that is a good regression, right? So opposite is if those circles, they are far away, for, for example, suppose suppose I got my, uh, let me use uh, circles. Suppose my data set is my observations here and there, so on and so forth, right? They're far away from far away from the center, right? Then correspondingly, of course, variation, variation of my residuals will be will be very large, right? <laughs> That's why in that case, my regression R square probably won't be too large. Variance beta head will be, you know, may not not a good regression, right? So that's that's why horizontal wise, X we hope for 
a large variation. Vertical-wise, UI hope variation hopefully to be small, right? So that so that we can get a good regression, right? So that's in that case, variance of beta hat will be small. You get a very efficient regression, right? Efficient beta hat, yes, which is corresponding to our regression R square. Regression R square, do you remember? Y hat, you know, variance of Y hat to be large, variance of U hat to be small, right? That's why in this regression, you know, in this graph, variance of U hat, hopefully small, right? Variance of Y hat, hopefully large, right? So that's the intuition. That's the intuition, you know, basically how to, how in what kind of situation we get, get a good regression, what kind of bad regression, a good regression, strong signal and, and a weak noise, right? So that a bad regression offers it. If your noise already dominates your signal, for example, if the bar is too noisy, right? So that uh, uh, the background noise already dominates my my voice, right? So the, at the other end of my of the cell phone, my my friend gonna have, have difficulty to tell what we're talking about, right? So that later on we're gonna learn how can we what shall we do if the variance of, of UI is too large, for example, in terms of in terms of heteroscedasticity, autocorrelation, what shall we do? The solution is very, very simple. In that case, the variance, you know, the noise will be too, too strong. It already kind of dominates signal. In that case, the solution is very simple. Just as try to try to do something to reduce the background noise so that we can we can recover the truth again. Just like in the bar, so if the bar is too noisy. You use a uh, use a glass ca cup, right? <laughs> you know, knock at the glass and ding, ding, ding. So everybody quiet, so that I <laughs> I make a phone call again, so that uh, my friend can can hear me, right? So that's the idea of regression. So uh, let's take a break, and after break, I I'll tell you more story about uh, these details. Uh, it's a seven forty, almost forty five. Uh, Let's come back at a 7.55.